Hey, this is a totally impromptu video, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the label of cult. When it comes to independent Baptist churches, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Some people think I should use it more. Some people think I should never use it. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I think about the word cult when it comes to talking about the IFB. So first of all, let's talk about uh, what I mean when I say a cult. Now, the definition has been given where it is just a strict religious devotion to a specific figure or object. Um, that is definitely a part of it. But when I refer to a cult, I, I, th there can be good and bad cults, right? There can be uh, good groups of devotion to a singular purpose or action that, that can be beneficial. Um, you could say that really any group or anybody that has a product is leading a cult of types. Um, that's the argument that Stephen Hassan makes, who's a cult expert. But where I specifically go into uh, what a cult is, is when it becomes harmful, when there is a undue influence or harmful um, effect on people, uh, whether when it's taking over someone's mind, not allowing them to think freely, uh, really everything that Stephen Hassan breaks down within uh, the bite model, which if you haven't looked at that, I'll drop it in the comments for you guys. Uh, but any kind of undue influence that makes you act against your best interests um, makes you act in a way that doesn't align with actual logic um, and where you're doing things because there are very severe consequences from within your organization, from the leadership, from the people around you. And when you go through the bite model, like again, pull that up, look at it while you're watching this video. Um, you know, there are a lot of the situations, like a lot of the things that are listed out within that are pretty typical within most IFB churches. Um, but I, I guess where I'll say this, I, where I've come to realize is that there's a lot of IFB churches, and I would say even a lot of churches in general, that are accidental cults. Um, there's churches that are very well-intentioned. Um, they truly feel like they're doing the right thing. They truly think they're helping people. But they are acting in a way that is incredibly harmful and toxic to the people within the church. This is very different from people who, like Jack Hiles, I believe knew what they were doing and were working specifically to manipulate for their own best interest. Now, where do I draw the distinction and why do I struggle with using the label cult so generously? Um, so... When you have a cult leader like Jack Hiles, who was very clearly a cult leader and very clearly was using his church as a platform for, you know, sexual advantage, for financial advantage, for, uh, you know, status advantage, for all of these different things that were advantageous to him, and he would run over wh whoever he could to get to it, that's someone that needs to be called out very clearly. He was a cult leader. First Baptist Church of Hammond was a cult as it was operated by Jack Hiles and the other leadership that was around him. Um, that's a cult. I'm not afraid to say that's a cult. Here's the problem. Cult leaders have very dedicated followers. So you have pastors, you have uh, college students who went to Jack Hiles and viewed him as Hiles portrayed himself. They didn't view him as he actually was. They viewed him and bought the lie of what the cult leader said. And so there were people who believed that what Jack Hiles did and the way he operated his ministry was the way to conquer evil, to uh, build really righteous, you know, bastions of holiness uh, with new churches. And so thousands of college students and young pastors trained under a cult leader, but all of those people had the intention to help serve their communities, to uh, do good for the country, to do good for the world, to do good for the kingdom. And so you have a lot of people who are well-intentioned, but became accidental cult leaders because they replicated the actions of a cult leader. And so when you want to deal with those two people, and this is the difficulty of doing a podcast, you have the very egregious cult leaders that need to be called out. They need to be called snakes and, you know, all of those things. But then you have people who are truly good people. And this is where I struggle to use the label cult. Even though it's fitting, I think the way you need to address people who are accidentally being uh, abusive as leaders, people who are accidentally following methodology and being separatists in the footsteps of people like, you know, Jack Hiles, you know, it, it, it kind of goes to that old saying, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Those are people who are truly trying to serve people. They truly feel like they're helping 
other people, but they're doing it with harmful methods. And so when I use the label of cult or you're a cult or you're a cult leader, or your, your followers are cult followers, all I'm doing is shutting off dialogue between people who might truly be good, well-intentioned and good people who would make pivots if they understood them as harmful. But when you call someone a cult, a cult leader, a cult member, something like that, um, all you're doing is just shutting off the dialogue and you know, you're making them go into their shell instead of being able to delineate and discern between someone who is truly being abusive and intentionally so and someone who learned tactics from a leader who was abusive and is replicating some of those maybe accidentally uh, on their community or on their church or fill in the blank. And so as I, I just wanted to kind of just record this really quick. I know it might be a little bit over the place, but um, my hesitancy with using the word cult doesn't mean that I'm taking it light on the, the abuses that are happening. I just think you have to remember your audience depending on who you're talking to. How I'm gonna to talk to a graduate of Hiles Anderson College who is truly a good person who's just replicating a really evil man, but they don't see it because they're brainwashed is different than how I'm going to address a Jack Hiles or someone who is specifically uh, being a very egregious, you know, kind of villain within the IFB world. Uh, Jack Hiles is just an obvious example. Obviously there's other people who are living who are uh, doing the same stuff. But just remember, before you get worried about just using the label, uh, just think about how helpful the label is going to be. I think calling out someone who is intentionally being an awful, awful, awful person uh, is important. But I think there's also people where they may not really be trying to run a cult. They may not be trying to do something that's harmful. They may actually be being harmful. They may actually need to be called out for some stuff. But we also need to remember like where they're coming from. And the easiest way to do that is remember where you were coming from. There was a time where I did things that were incredibly abusive and incredibly rude and incredibly disrespectful to a lot of different people, but I felt like I was helping people. I felt like I was uh, this bastion of righteousness in my community, but I was just being a jerk a lot of the times. But when you're inside of it, you don't see that. When you're inside of it, you don't understand that. And just imagine how closed off you would have been if someone came at you charging with you as you're a cult member, you hate people, you're trying to abuse people, you're hurting people. No, you want someone to come to you and say, I know, and this is what people did for me. I know that your intentions are good, but your methods are awful. And you need to take a step back and make some pivots in what you're doing. So uh, I just wanted to share, that's just a couple of impromptu thoughts. I didn't even expect to do this. I just got off a training call, uh, but that's some of my thoughts on what it means to uh, you know, use the word cult um, when I try to use it. And just some of the thoughts that I've had recently about kind of the idea of the accidental cult leader. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope that's uh, somewhat helpful. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I hope this prompts a discussion in the comments. Um, I'm not saying at all, take it easy on people who are doing something that's wrong. Obviously, I do a whole podcast about confronting that stuff. Um, I just think we need to remember whoever we're addressing uh, in any specific situation because no two, uh, no two things are the same. Uh, so we have to be careful in the verbiage that we use and remember the ultimate goal of these discussions. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, really appreciate you guys. Have a very happy holidays and I'll talk with you very soon.